today's exercise, I am working in my sketchbook. It's one that I picked up at Target, I think. It's a multimedia one um, because I wanted the paper to be a little bit more flat, more um, with not as much texture as the watercolor paper usually comes with um, because I figured the lines that I'm drawing here um, I needed a, a flatter surface for. Um, I had previously drawn the rectangles and squares with a pencil just so that I could make sure that um, the lines were straight enough because that was the whole point of this exercise. I wanted these um, geometric shapes um, rather defined and I had previously just done circles with uh, together with the neurographic lines with the exception of the Valentine one that included some hearts. So I'm drawing um, what is going to be the neurographic lines later. I am not an expert when it comes to neurographic art, but I know that in neurographic art, usually what you do is you draw the lines a little bit more intuitively than I do here. For this composition, I just wanted to make sure that I had lines going um, a little bit more planned than I would usually do neurographic art. And, um, you know, the process in the end is about the same. It's just that I had a plan on where those lines were going to go. But it's still very um, relaxing and I just enjoy the process of rounding out those, those corners very much. I also enjoy the cells that it creates over what is underneath. Um, the lines, in this case, those um, squares and rectangles, you can definitely tell that the, the shapes are still there, but even though those are harder lines, the neurographic lines immediately make them much softer. And just in case you were wondering, no, I do not draw this fast. Parts of these little video clips have been sped up a little so you don't have to sit through all of this in real time. This is real time right here, just to show you how long it takes me to actually uh, round out corners, but most of it is sped up. And so now I am adding the color and I've chosen the green palette simply because I don't usually work with green. It's not a color that I pick automatically. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. And if you're wondering why I'm going um, cell by cell here, I couldn't tell you why. I find it relaxing, if anything. <laughs> you don't have to. You can just, you know, paint the whole thing, but I don't know. I guess it's another way for me to practice my watercolor strokes and being a little bit more precise, I suppose. But you could totally do this all in one go. There's no reason why you couldn't go over the black lines that you drew. 
I'm just trying things out, you guys. I'm not a professional. If you've watched any of my other videos, of which I have quite a few accumulated now, um, then you will know that I am in no way a professional professional uh, artist. I am just rediscovering it after having um, taken a while uh, of you know doing something else. Um, I am just now coming back to it and rediscovering um, watercolors and acrylics and that's why that's how I stumbled across the neurographic art I never heard before of it and um, I've come to love it and I tend to incorporate it in a lot of my um, in a lot of my um, um, compositions nowadays I had missed a spot there, so I went back in and rounded it off, making sure that my water um, color, the paper wasn't too um, dissolved or wet still. So now um, I'm just finishing off the darkest shade of green. And then I was kind of wondering, I was stumped as to what to do with the, um, the other cells that I had. I knew I wanted to um, do some zentangles, but I didn't really know what. I had tried something else on a, on a, on a piece that I did before this one, and I didn't like it. It was, it was too in your face. I decided that I wanted the um, geographic, oh, geographic, the geometric, um, um, shapes to stand out a little bit more and so I decided to just do the thin lines that I'm doing here and uh, it was uh, quite relaxing actually I there's something very soothing of doing these thin lines and I purposely chose a very thin micron marker for this I think it's the 0.05 I'm not mistaken so very thin lines and uh, I am just filling in all those cells that um, are surrounding my green rectangles and squares it's also quite fun to watch it in hyperlapse I have to say So in the end, I was very pleased with how it looked and I am glad that I stuck with the lines. So to finish the piece up, I want to give it even more depth. So I'm going in and I'm shading the um, corners of my shapes with um, the same but a dark, darker, more saturated shade of that same green. And I'm just gonna go over all of them one more time. At first I was, you know, trying to go cell by cell, but then I realized that that's actually, um, it's, it's, it looks better if I just go over the black lines, so if I was going against my uh, my instinct of you know doing it cell by cell, <laughs> but in the end, it all worked out. I'm just always amazed at you know how you can change. A perspective by just giving it some shading and some highlights and it's such an easy um, step to do I also gave it more shading around my shapes with just some black or I think it was gray um, watercolor and that lifted it off the page even more. 
And I'm so glad I added this part because it just gave it that much more interest. Finishing up the shading part here and then I can show you what I have so far this is what it looks like and I really really like it how it turned out I wanted to give those lines a little bit more interest and so I am thickening some of the lines going over them one more time and just maybe adding a little bit more interest to them just to make them stand out a little bit more and uh, sometimes you know when you do stuff on impulse like that you hope it turns out okay and I actually I enjoyed it <laughs> I'm glad I did and then I am adding some highlights and I'm using the Posca pen the white Posca and I don't know if it was necessary because I told you in in the beginning that the um, the paper is fairly thin even though it's multimedia it's not watercolor paper so I unfortunately added quite a bit of water already to the paper and it started to um, dissolve a little bit underneath it but um, it's okay you know it's in my sketchbook and it's a practice piece so I'm not mad about it so this is what it looks like in the end. I quite like it. I want to thank you for joining me today and watching me work on this piece. And I hope to see you in one of my future videos. If you would like, you of course can subscribe to my channel. And um, I hope to see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.